it's it's hard and and we just literally have no idea what this is going to be you don't know like you just don't know where it's going to go that's cool and sometimes it doesn't work and sometimes you get really frustrated because nothing is coming. I think the creative process is hard because you, you always feel like you're gonna kind of blow it at any minute. And they cost too much, uh, no one may like it. Designing is not just drawing stuff. The material is such a, a big part of, of the creation. You know, we need to go over to Lyon and work with Mike and Guillaume in the shop, start cutting and, and seeing what happens. A lot of uh, painters went to South of France for the lights. Monet, who used to paint like uh, many times the same things because it's the uh, lights change all the time. Biggest fear with that, the expectation. And yeah, the expectation is really high. All the steps along the way are telling you to go the opposite direction. We could literally do all of this work and say, we don't like it. Even if it's beautiful on the computer, at the end you are dealing with a piece of steel and you have to make it work. Uh, it's like 35 degrees out. Yeah, comfort makes you sleepy and lazy and tired. And You're thinking about your material now differently because you're not comfortable. With trade shows, there's always really this sense of urgency. We didn't want that sense of urgency to trump what's going to be this totally new product line for this collaboration representing both of our companies. Entrepreneurs, especially creative ones, aren't always good business owners. We're launching a, a new product, an idea next year. How do we make it really good, uh, really special, really unique? Not only to find it, but to be able to, to make it and to make it right. So Ryan packed up his things. He brought his wife, Anna, and his daughter, Della, to roche Trohan, uh, where Guillaume and Mike live. Force the time so that we're all together at one particular place and say, this is, we have to kind of focus on this thing. Tick tock, time's gonna be here before we know it, where we have to ship this out and have this ready, and this needs to be a product line that we can bring to the public. That's scary, right? Because you're, you're putting all your cards there on one table and you're saying, you know, we're gonna make something happen. Do you wanna step out into the light with us um, and bring I Would Love to, to New York in 2016? Let's do this together. Yeah, let's do it. Let's push it. And you've got, and then you've got the idea that you uh, had printed out. Yeah, and we like the idea of something hard like wood. The wood, yeah, yeah. very uh, Seattle uh, style. You know? Right, right. You know, you took a four foot box and we just you lift it up on side, mm -hmm. and that was the shape. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we can because we find like a grid system. So yeah, if we start with just this kind of simple grid. The grid then can get complex, right? Phase two, you start to play with the triangle, triangle uh, structure. You say, okay, that's our same grid. Mm -hmm. And then you just yeah. shift it, right? Yeah. yeah. Like meter corner, like uh, with like 65 degrees. Yeah. How do you handle that, you know? Yes. yes. It's going to end at this. <laughs> <laughs> well, so we just... They're talking about design constantly just sketching and doodling non-stop and they're drawing and they're having so much fun. It gets to the point where it really sucks you into it. And it's just this never-ending passion, not for perfection, but just to push the design as far as we can. And then out of that will often come another direction. They're really visionaries each in their own way. They're super creative. They're so passionate about what they do. You're at a lunch table with all of these really interesting people who um, do all sorts of different things that they're really passionate about. So there's Flo, the baker. Baking is an art for Flo. Si moi m'intéresse, j'irai pas dire à là que mon travail c'est une, une passion, parce que j'ai d'autres passions maintenant. Euh, j'ai commencé dans les années euh, 95 à peu près. Ça déjà pour le coup ça, ça c'est intéressant manuellement parlant et puis parce que ben voilà j'aime j'aime manger ça se, ça se voit un petit peu ce qui est intéressant c'est de partir d'un tu vois d'une du, du, finalement quelque chose d'assez simple de la farine de l'eau du sel de la levure and i love that 
kind of juxtaposition where we, you know, we're sort of saying there's this kind of high design goal, but at the same time we're approaching it from this just basic element of what design should be. You know, it's these kind of simple things that are just done exactly the best way they should be. A French bigot. <laughs> so often we don't try to go out of our way to share our passion to that degree with other people just because. C'est assez sympa. Après moi ce que j'aime bien aussi c'est euh, transmettre. Entre autres euh, là on a l'exemple avec Nico qui, qui est en reconversion donc euh, qui, 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 était, qui avait attaqué un métier dans un premier temps et puis qui est venu vers nous pour, pour qu'on lui apprenne un peu no, notre job, euh, comment on le fait. We were talking about this structure, this grid, but didn't find the right one. He was doing the croissants. He, he was making this amazing grid, triangle grid, really nice. Mais là, la manière dont tu fais tes croissants, c'est une bonne idée en fait pour notre projet euh, avec Light Art. It makes me think about uh, the shape, the grid we, we were looking for. Alors après, on va faire les pains au chocolat. Tu vas voir comment c'est taillé. Ah, bah, ça va nous donner une nouvelle euh, idée pour la structure. Hein. Ouais. C'est parfait. Very really nice. Sometimes ideas come from, you know, dough. <laughs> I started the school at 15. I did three years of glass blower. After school, I, I spent like uh, five years in Paris to like a uh, design school. Jobs in Paris, moved to the US for a few years, come back to Paris. I decided to be on my own, you know, and that's where with Michael we decided to create our companies. Because they're so passionate, it's hard for them to be just consultants. They have to start to think about their own products because that's who they are, right? These amazing designers who have so many ideas that they want to share, but also that they want to put into play. And so they created I Would Love. They build and design everything from like glasses for tag, to table legs, to new tiny homes and sheds. You know, they really love this world of product design. I think Ryan, in a sense, has kind of sat at the foot of a master. When he left USC, he did some architectural work, but it's, I'm not sure when he was picked up by Chihuly, but I believe that was five years, and it was really, I believe, a, a period of intense development. He's from Spokane, Washington. He's from a farm. And a lot of that kind of natural, organic look really plays so beautifully in that realm of sculptural fixtures that are kind of light arts, heart and soul. Guillaume kind of came onto 3 Form. He started working with them and really, you know, talking about just the way to take resin and make it sexy and bring it to the market. I grew up in a small village. And uh, it was amazing to live in Paris uh, and to study in Paris. Amazing, but uh, I needed uh, to breathe. You <laughs> spend so much time uh, in, in the traffic. Kind of like a nightmare, you know, like commute to work, uh, work until uh, late at night and come back home and you, your kids are already in bed. Mike's partner, Anne, was pregnant with their first son, Guillaume, and his wife, Sophie, and their two boys just kind of felt like they needed a little bit of a reprieve from the city. They're going to move to the, the country and, and sort of be in this very you know, small village and, and yet still work at this very kind of high design level. I, I needed more, more green, more air, more light. There's a baker, a contractor, lots of folks who are just so willing to share their crafts and trades and talents around the town. It's like going back to the real life, you know, and now your friends are the carpenter, the chef at the restaurant, what means the village, you know, like, uh, so it's just like open again, the way you see things. Just focus on the main points, the family, the work, the friends and everything. 75, Isa. 75. Go to the markets to get local fruits, you can walk, take your bicycle and it's like five minutes away from home. Being in this village, so right away you have space, so we got this great shop to really uh, experiment and prototype, and, and it takes uh, what we do uh, to the next level, you know, because as soon as you make things, you realize if they work or not, you know? I can't believe you guys were here for years without the heater. And you know why we bought this one? Yeah. 
Mostly to work on the motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> you start a new project, you start with this white page and uh, it's an uncontrolled, uh, unknown uh, time. You need really like uh, a time before to digest the, the subject, you know, like uh, getting out, like going and visit like uh, a show. Think about it, dream about it. Anything we can really t take you away, but at the same time create uh, maybe connections. <laughs> I love it. When I use it, it's, it's just for pleasure. And I sold my brand new bike, really efficient, for uh, an old BMW and removing all the bad parts. And then you take a piece of metal and you bend it and you weld it. Now, this part is maybe even better than riding the bike. An idea starts over here and it ends up way over here in a place that you never thought it would go to. And you're saying, oh, it's a piece of this, and we liked a piece of that, and we liked a piece of that. And I think we're taking the best of all those things. To just have that trust and that faith that they're gonna take an idea and bring it so far, so fast, which Ryan loves, because he wants everything to move fast, right? <laughs> we decided to uh, go into the town of Lyon to uh, connect with the city a little bit. So Lyon is well known for La Fête des Lumières, happens like every year, the full city is glowing, you know, of lights. And while they were in Lyon, they saw the Museum of Confluences. Designed by Coupe Emmenblau, and it is uh, just completed this year. This is just fantastic. But finally, when you are close, you can see this amazing skin around this crazy shape. A great feeling of being under like a, a big rock, right at the confluence of these two main rivers. You don't feel like uh, right downtown the city. And made a big contrast in the, with this black reveal and the aluminum panels. Instead of hiding this, um, the technical part of that, they showed it. And just the way the light changes on the panels, yeah. it's an amazing space. Like sculpturally, it just kind of makes you happy. It kind of hit me that. That was the, the missing link. Then all of a sudden, this building in its sort of 3D architectural form says, no, it has to be about structure because it's a space and it's holding itself up. And we could find all these amazing uh, patterns. It was not uh, designed by someone. It was more designed by the shape itself. Every, every picture you take of it, it looks good. I mean, look at the light on that. That's insane. And it, every piece is custom, you know? Yeah. Even if it's beautiful on the computer, at the end you are dealing with a piece of steel and bolts and nuts and uh, you have to make it work. And it's got this kind of really fresh geometry, literally. It's planes and walls that are doing something different than you would typically see in a building. We see the, the three different kind of grid we talked about. Yes. You know, in, in the same building. That's right. You have to, that's yeah. the line that gives you structure. Yeah. That's, otherwise, it's, it's a carved yeah. surface. Yeah, yeah. Because it's easy to do things sculpturally, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So, but when you get back to the fact that we've done these series of geometrical pieces, yeah. how do you get geometrical pieces sculptural again? Yeah. That's, that's why architecture solves it. Yeah. So basically we, we want to, to move from like this typical flat grid and really give this third dimension. And that's where the complexity is, uh, comes. That's a really kind of compelling thing that can only sort of happen through uh, modern construction techniques. And now we have this technology where we can cut things out on CNC's and we can model things out on yeah. 3D programs. Like now we can create the complexity that yeah. we couldn't make before. Yeah. We got away a little bit from the sculptural side. Let's kind of get back to the sculptural roots of, of the shapes that we started doing and let's sort of reinterpret all of the work that, that has already been done. Meanwhile, we're back here in Seattle. Bruce Clark, the product manager, and Kyle Burt are developing a concept that's almost identical to what Guillaume, Mike, and Ryan are talking about simultaneously in France. It was just amazing to see this building, you know. It's really uh, very impressive in terms of technology and uh, architecture, and at the same time, it's very real. We, we just all got so excited about it, and we immediately started kind of sketching what we were doing with this mind, saying, well, no, this, this answers this, this answers this. And it's really confirm your you are on the r right path. That's when all of a sudden, yeah, you're, you're thinking just it shifts. That's good.
Why France for me had two different answers. Most importantly, that Mike and Guillaume lived here and that you know, France is this you know, country about food and, and design, certainly. That's sort of that um, presence. And then there's this kind of freshness, this, this newness that we're talking about. So that's this, this contrast between the, the sort of old and the new, the countryside of Lyon and the sort of high design, and then the Seattle and, and light art and where we're uh, making everything. And the materials are so much stone and uh, kind of older materials that you see in, in France. And then we have this you know, rather new kind of environment in Seattle. So I think when we go to Europe, to Lyon, there is a sensibility that European. It's different. They share the same passion, the same goal, but the viewpoint they bring from the farm through Seattle, and they bring from Lyon, from Paris, from their school. They're better to be together, and it, it is a broader, uh, richer, result than you'd have alone. Light and dark, space and void. You, if there's not contrast, you don't have something that's interesting. And that's actually the difference between it's noisy, I need to think about that, or it's cold, I need to think about that. Lots of work that they were doing at Mike and Guillaume's studio, which they said was absolutely freezing, so freezing that people couldn't talk or function. Uh, it's like 35 degrees out, that's going to be hard. You're thinking about your material now differently because you're not comfortable. Design always has to have that kind of contradiction that even even back in Seattle you know we like just the concrete floor and the, and the wood wall it's like you know if it's carpeted and drywall you just it's gone sure yeah comfort makes you sleepy and lazy and tired and you might as well be in a hermetically sealed box right you're not cold you're not hot you're not loud you're not quiet you're not then what are you you're just I think it's like a, an actor or you have to have the stress make you really uncomfortable to do good you know if you are in the comfort zone you are going to do okay, only okay. <laughs> it's another switch, having Mike and Guillaume come to Seattle. What do you see about Seattle? What's different? The time zone, the food, the, the, uh, the environment, the culture, the, everything is different. So you're having, like, all your senses are completely aligned in a different direction. Same ingredients, yet completely different environment. What happens with that, right? How do you shift your thinking? It's just totally real, right? That's like, that's authentic. This would work. I mean, people would get it right away. It's very, very sellable. So regardless of everything else, like, yeah. That's already a, an nice amazing product. range, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. From like block, you know, like a yeah. Casper, white, really clean, mm -hmm. four to eight. And mm -hmm. sconce. That one we talked about just carving off on the five axis, right? Yeah. Yeah, five axes would be ideal. Yeah. And then we can just sand those surfaces flat and then weld it all together. We will have time after March to work out details, right? After March, potentially on the The problem machine. is without the five, you know, where we have angles that we're not cutting, it makes it harder for us to determine whether we've got our shades right. Right, so they're always so, going to be sloppy. Yeah, or, or you, you just won't know. Right. right. Yeah, I'll call you. I'll right. talk to you next week. And we're kind of crossing our fingers that we're going to have some just sparks of creativity. Can I pour you some red? Or do you want more of that? A wise old man once told me if you don't have champagne in your refrigerator, you're not ready to have a good time. The connotation of the word crucible as a melting pot works great for me because most of the wines at some point will be blended with a little bit of other wine, kind of like using seasoning, salt and pepper for stuff. And then we ferment in some of the bigger bins that are in the back, they're open top fermentation. So then we press it and barrel it. And I have volunteers that come down and yeah. help bottle. Not a lot of them come back, because it's a lot of work. They, I think they think it's such a sexy business to be in, right? Uh, Ryan's been through some rough patches and getting it started. And the early part of this company, it's a rough go. Starting something that you have no idea where you're going, you always feel like you're going to kind of blow it at any minute, you know? We went for three and a half years with not a drop of wine to sell. You have to be passionate about it, I guess, and be willing to do the work. If it's something that you just want to do as a hobby, just do it as a hobby. All the steps along the way are telling you to go the opposite direction. So you stop being creative, you know, you don't know anything, or you go back to just being safe. And uh, some friends of mine were opening up a specialty food and wine shop in town. They were just people that seemed to enjoy life a little bit more. The, the little things in life, like eating and drinking and having a conversation. I made some Syrah in my garage and it was terrible. And then every now and then you have this sort of a small aha moment. You think, oh, 
that was kind of good. And then you kind of work on some more, and then, then you kind of fall down again. And He's thinking about these super pie-in-the-sky kind of out there ideas with them. He has to make them easy to show for reps, easy to buy for clients. There's really this huge crunch for how are we actually going to get this done. So I find Ryan really free-flowing, free-form. There's no such thing as the word no. It's all about possibilities. You have all these ideas and you have the one really easy to do and, and the one really crazy. And sometimes you have to kind of readjust. If you don't sell stuff, then you can't do the other fun stuff. So you kind of have to find your niche. You really have to test an idea to its fullest to see kind of if you like it. I mean, not that we have to build every single one at a full scale, but I mean, you have to really like draw it out and think it through. And The first vintage that we did, I, I made like 15 different types of wine grapes. I, I was almost throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what was going to stick. We cut them all on our three-axis machine. And when we cut the angle, we'd use a bit and just go back and forth. Well, the, the angles weren't perfect, and we had to overcut into the corners just to accommodate for the machine. So we don't have the right machine to make what we're designing. This looks really amazing, but is this something that we can actually productize and bring to market? And the new machine is going to be able to have a head that rotates and cuts at whatever angle these pieces are going to be cut at. It's, we just can't, if we don't have that machine, it, we can't build this. Ten years ago, we would never think about uh, this idea. I mean, it's sort of interesting and risky and futuristic, and it's going to be unique because it's harder to do it that way. So yeah, a lot of expectation. We still have a lot to do, and the expectation is really high. And you, and you just feel like you're an utter failure. You just get to the end of the day and you just think, we didn't do anything that was, you know, mattered. It sounds very new agey, but you agitate the wine and it doesn't, it doesn't taste right. Yeah. You taste wine out of the barrel and it tastes good and you put it in the tank and it tastes good and then it goes through that bottling line, tastes totally different and you think, what have I done? You have confidence about the end goal, but you know you are going to go through these uh, cycles of like, wow, I don't know if we are going to get it. You want something to be so creative, but um, you don't feel creative at all sometimes doing it. And sometimes it doesn't work. And sometimes you get really frustrated because nothing is coming. And where's your wife? She's good. Yeah? Yeah. And uh, sometimes you, you want to make it uh, way too complex. I mean, we know the ingredients. We, we think we know what we like, but it could still just not work. We don't know if people will like it. We're scared that maybe people won't like it. It's a new idea. We're still not sure what that's going to be once it gets to New York. You can test them and try them and you just have to hope that you, you show them to the world and that somebody bites onto it a little bit. <laughs> Designing stuff for yourself is uh, the best way to practice. If I have a stair, I'm going to make my stair and uh, as simple as possible, two pieces of steel, like some uh, wood uh, steps. We actually all liked wood uh, because it's this kind of raw, beautiful material. Seattle's also known for having this, this beautiful wood. Just in this building, I mean, you've got urban hardwoods that you're talking about. Like, they eat, drink, and breathe wood. That's what they do, and they're passionate about it. Uh, the founder of the company saw logs floating by in the river and thought, you know, somebody should do something with those. So he went out and he got a tugboat. Well, he immediately found out that that was just too cost prohibitive, but right next door to his space was a tree service company. He said, if you're looking for trees, you know, I'm cutting down trees every day. We go get the logs, we mill it, dry it, make furniture and architectural elements out of it. Designing is not just drawing stuff. The material is such a, a big part of, uh, of the creation. And pick the right material for the right uh, needs. Uh, 16 years old, the life bring me to an amazing school in Paris. And first thing, they give you a, a raw piece of wood with a really old tool. And they ask you to do uh, the perfect shape. And you spend like two months doing this stuff, that's crazy. The techniques that tended to be really hard to do, or really specialized, tended to make the piece actually that much more interesting. We hire what we call an artisan. They are the people that are doing the most hand building still, where we are cutting uh, materials into various shapes. They heat them, hand form them, and build these sculptural chandeliers with them. The designing begins at milling. We design things in response to the material. 
and how do you take uh, regular material and, and just um, look at it a different way and, and what does it become. When we get a log out of the kiln, we're looking at the best features of those pieces. There's always this you know, struggle to really stay true to your mission and your aesthetic. Is this too far from what we do? What is authentic design? Or like what's an authentic starting point? Probably the best way to answer that is just looking at the material because the material is authentic in its raw form. I mean, people make material unauthentic, right? And the process is authentic if you get back to just doing it by hand. That's actually the difference, right? Just like doing it by hand, then it becomes real. And that's why authentic cooking or authentic experiences are always ones that are done in person or by hand. It's hard as a young architect to be connected to the piece. You can work on it two or three years and never see it built. And I think when Ryan made that move through Chihuly and got so close to the handwork, literally, that accompanies creativity, that farm time came back. He worked with his hands, he knows materials. People like experiences that are very real, and I think people like interacting with objects that mean something to them. We make fixtures you know, right in Seattle, and it's all about the people touching it and making it, and, and we can tell that really kind of honest story. It's just what we do. It's very easy to answer by complex answer. Getting simple is the hardest part. Often when I go to the US, I will get some cheese and they are going to put, I don't know, fruits or nuts or I say, no, keep the cheese uh, cheese. What we do is not that different than it was a hundred years ago. It's pretty amazing to me that something this so old world is still so relevant. It seems like there's been a resurgence of the whole notion of craft. The fact that people are starting to go to butcher shops and bakeries to get their bread and meat instead of just going to the grocery store is kind of cool and you're seeing these mom and pop businesses doing better than they have been. People are taking a little more time out of their day to just enjoy things a little bit more and get to know the people that they're getting their stuff from. You know, handmade products, things that are well made that are going to last. Because of that elevated value, people are willing to pay what it takes to achieve that. I mean, there's a reason why products, goods are, are mass produced, a definite economy and scale, but so often they're soulless. And so sure, there's a lot easier way to make furniture than the way we do. And there's a lot easier way to source material, but we're investing in this material, the best material that it can possibly be. And we are spending you know, two to three years procuring, milling, drying this furniture. There's something so satisfying about being able to produce something that does have a soul, that does have heart and it has a story behind it. From the, the quality of the material to the, the quality of the people who are producing it and the, the ethics and the values that, that are also tied up in that, I don't know if it can get much better than that. C'est une institution la chartreuse, c'est-à-dire qu'on on boit ça, c'est vraiment la boisson de fin de repas ouais, qu'on va, ouais. qu va boire comme ça entre copains, entre, euh, c'est vraiment le, 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 le lien quoi en fait ouais. presque euh, ouais. qui se fait ouais. comme ça. Ouais. Euh, l'histoire, le début de l'histoire c'est 1605, c'est le général Destré qui a donné un, un manuscrit qu'il avait en sa possession, personne n'arrivait à, à déchiffrer. Ouais. Et euh, il l'a donné au père Chartreux qui au départ était euh, euh, ouais, un petit peu, enfin qui avait cette science, quoi, ouais, qui avait cette connaissance ouais. des plantes et tout ça. Ouais. Ça a été les seuls en fait à pouvoir euh, déchiffrer ce manuscrit. Donc ils ont eu la plante, ils ont eu la, la recette. T'as l'impression de monter des escaliers, c'est-à-dire qu'il ouais. met ça en bouche et ça va Climbing a stair. Oui, c'est ça. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Like the chef of the restaurant, I don't want to create like a, you know, a recipe with uh, 100 ingredients. I want like the basics to be perfect. We went into this knowing we were kind of all over the place, right? So we learned what our capability was. We learned how far we could go. You have to make sure that you're not limiting your creativity by pragmatism, not letting the uncertainty of how successful the, that direction is going to be keep you from trying new things. We're not exactly sure how it's going to be received. I think really at the end of the day, it's about so much more than that. And all of the steps that we took to get here are what really matter. I'm more interested in how we work than what we do. You don't want to get to a point where you lose the, uh, the reason why you're doing something. And I live in Portland, Oregon. 
and I drive up and down this freeway every week. And I'm always excited to get back here on a Monday morning because for me, everything starts with people. And that has been so rewarding because it's such an extraordinary group of people. Working alone, it's, you are uh, the only master, but you know it's boring at the same time, and you're stuck with your ideas. You think you have all the answers, I mean, you kind of end up living in your own bubble, right? Your gauge is, is yourself, which could be completely off. But when you work with other people, you have the ability to sort of always check that. Because we, you start with an idea, and then someone moves the idea a little bit on, on the left, and. Boom, 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 boom. It gets added, 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 added. One plus one again equals three. And then, then everyone's kind of excited about it. With all these eyes, you, you can't really be wrong, you know? There's a creative solution that you haven't seen. There are different ways to look at it. You never make a mistake with Ryan. And the big thing is, what do we take away from it? They're not setbacks, they're just, hopefully they help you make your, your path a little bit better, you know, as you get there. How do we get there? So we know there's a process you have to go through, made of uh, good and bad. But the experience tells you that it's a, a normal process. I think that's like truly the sign of a good leader, is somebody who can raise up those around them and not just uh, always look at the end game for themselves. You might personally feel like you only have a quarter of it and someone else might feel like they've got a quarter of it. But collectively, you know, you should put all those quarters together and you create something that's bigger than that. Probably most importantly is you, you don't do it alone. Getting a bunch of really interesting people together, that is hard to explain, you know, it just kind of happens. And it, and it doesn't work if, if, if the people are not right, it won't work. When Ryan started Light Art, and started building this team out. That's what he was looking for, that really great community. When Guillaume and Mike moved to Rose Trois, I think you know that's what they were looking for, that community. Well, that's what makes creativity uh, easier. It's no longer just you know a path that you're on yourself. We're all excited about the end goal and how to get there, but I think we're also excited about the path along the way. This building that we're in is kind of like a family. We have some, some crazy folks here, but it, it's a pleasure to see everybody every day. If we could just get like a cheese maker in here somewhere. Et voilà, moi, ça m'a toujours l'imagination. Pouvoir, fait finalement, on n'a jamais fait le tour du, du truc. Euh, et voilà, et tu rencontres quelqu'un un jour et qui te dit, euh, ben j'ai mis j'ai mis ça dedans et tu trouves ça super. Because that's what it's all about. It's about the friendships and relationships that you create along the way. And if the people have interesting, you know, experiences and backgrounds and different things to offer, then it becomes this amazing kind of synergy. It's fun, I mean, it's, it's a, a better process. It's like a big vine, and the leaves on that vine are the people here. And it has been so unbelievable to be at the end of my life, and it ends up being the best job. That I've ever had. It's the damnedest place I've ever been. No other way to do that besides getting the, the right people together. It just wouldn't work any other way. You know, that's the magic of it. Je ne sais pas. C'est parti <rire>